I'm going to walk through how you use Brush to create installation profiles uh, extremely quickly. So I'm really excited about this project. Uh, this is for Profiler Builder uh, because the process I'm about to show that we've gotten boiled down to uh, effectively three Brush commands uh, used to take me several weeks to do, quite honestly, <laughs> to format these files the first few times I was learning how to do it. And it's really hard to actually explain to someone why they would want to go about doing this. But, um, what we're going to do is we're going to go into, uh, in this case, we're, we're going to R10 because that was shown in the previous video. Um, and so I can do a, a three-step command, if you will, is you do drush, DL, profile, or builder, uh, which already exists, so it's going to come in if you to write it, and yes. So you'll see it's downloaded the latest version of profile or builder. The next command you're going to run is drush, EN, profile, or builder, which is going to enable profile, or builder. Again, I've already turned it on, so it's going to say, hey, you know, you already have that on. Um, so that's the second command. The third command, then, uh, that you get with Profiler Builder for Drush is Drush, and it's the full form is generate distro, um, or the, the short form is just distro. So Drush, distro, and then the name of the you know, install profile or distribution, whatever, you know, whatever term you want to use. Um, so this is the machine name. So if I do art010, Let's see, it, has, it says rope.tar file or 10 tar to current directory. Uh, so if we go <clears throat> into our folder structure here, you will see because I'm in R10, it actually created the package that I, in the previous video, did through the user interface. I uh, created it right here so I can open that up. And all it does is it uses the defaults that would have been uh, put in place. Uh, so there aren't, there aren't any options associated or other arguments from passive at this time. But what you can do is um, even better, in my opinion. So let's try that out again. So we have Drush Distro Art 10, and then there's a options for it. So if we do Untar, that's our option. You see it says Profile Art 10 created successfully. So it didn't create a tar that time. Uh, what it did was it tries to write the installation profile into the correct location. So it goes into Profiles, and you see now we have Art 010. It adds our .info install profile drush make file all there, and then goes a step further and creates a libraries folder. If it found the library profiler, which usually if you're using this, you'll have, it automatically copies it in the right location, so you don't have to think about it. Um, it structures your modules directory in a way that you typically would do if you're releasing a distribution. Uh, so you would you know, make a underscore features, and then it's not going to put the files there, uh, but it at least bundles it up this way. Um, your themes, it has you know, custom and control folders made. So it goes a step beyond what it you know, can really only do with its hard packaging. Um, and again, you know, you're still going to have to go into your make file and look for the to-dos and you know, basically resolve the errors that, that you can't do anything about um, at this time. But to show something else that this has support for, um, so a lot of times when you're doing local development, if you're running ahead of Train uh, on versions and releases, you have patches. Right? So, patch management is kind of annoying, quite frankly. <laughs> um, so, let's try. I have some example patches in this one. So, we're going to do drush distro cis test. And then we're going to do an and that. Right? So, this is going to go into this other site that I'm working on, which is cis. You can see this one took a little bit longer than the previous one. Uh, that's because it has patches. So, we're going to to CIS and then the profiles and CIS, CIS test run. Um, and now if I go into my make file and open that and scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see that we have patches. So we found patches in my Drupal site. Uh, a really cool feature of what it does here is so if I, in this case, I have an LDAP patch, right? And this patch of the LDAP module is actually stored in the directory LDAP. It's, typically where you should put the patch so that then it applies correctly. Um, what it does is it finds .patch files. It will then test this. It will do an HTTP request and test if this exists on Drupal.org. If it does, then it will automatically link to it. So you've already got the correct path to it. Uh, so you'll see LDAP and field collection. I have two legitimate patches from Drupal.org on there. Um, these are some other example ones as to what it would do. So in this case, I have a patch in sites only, right? And 
I don't know why you would really put one there, but let's say I had one there to patch a bunch of files. It will at least pick it up and recognize, hey, I don't know where this is from. And then you'll see you get two error messages associated with this one. So you have a to-do, add path to patch, um, because you don't have a path to. If you didn't look at the element, you do that. If you're putting it on uh, Drupal.org, you can find time, you can do that too. And then there's associate patch to a project. So you'll see it's not going to patch a project right now. It just gives you a location to it. So you can at least find it uh, and make changes. Maybe you know, it's a development oversight or something like that. Um, the other thing it does is it tries to find things that have been placed in uh, core Drupal files that are dot, of dot, type dot .patch and then associate them to the Drupal project itself. Um, in this case, you'll see I have a core test dot .patch, which is not a real patch, and other core test dot .patch, which is also not real. Uh, so because it couldn't find the, it tests all of them in the Drupal anyway. So because it couldn't find these, it adds the to do add path to patch. Um, and you'll see in this one, I also have the libraries, I have a whole bunch of different libraries and uh, things got brought over and my to do's for my modules. So that's basically a rundown of what Profiler Builder does. Um, if you've got Rush, you can pretty much convert your site into a, a tar file distribution, um, or at least enough of one that you know I hope you can you can give it to someone else and they can kind of analyze what you've done at a high level. Because uh, the more and more that we work on Google the better it is for you know, getting people on there to new functionality to give them examples and things. So um, I made this because I manage a lot of different distributions and ended up doing this a lot of times. There's probably six or seven distributions in there. <laughs> so this is definitely a streamer.